Okay, so here's the color pencil tutorial. So here you can see that I'm using the uh, grids in order to do my drawing first. And I'm just doing a very simple, very, very light pencil drawing. And notice that I'm constantly using my finger to kind of scroll around on my phone to try to change to different angles. That's because I want to make sure that I'm drawing one box at a time. Um, on some of these parts, especially with the complicated parts, I'm looking at like four boxes at once so that I can kind of tell where they're overlapping. But it's really important that when you go to do a color pencil drawing that you have a very accurate drawing first before you start coloring. If your drawing is off, then your coloring is going to also be off. So very important to make sure that your drawing is accurate as you can get it. So here I've lightly sketched it in. Now I'm gonna go in with my color pencil. Notice the colors that I'm using. It does not seem totally natural, but as I zoomed in on that picture, those are the colors that I saw, so therefore those are the ones that I used. I'm also doing what we call a, um, kind of like a under underlaying color, I think is what we call it. <laughs> but um, that's where you're using kind of like unusual colors on top, on the bottom and then layering more natural colors on top. So here you can see that I'm using a purple and an orange, and then I'm layering it with a red and a brown in order to get that kind of a skinnish tone. And then you can also use a white color pencil to kind of blend that in together. And I also went in with an eraser. All right, so here in the brown fur area, you notice that I did a yellow first, and then I did very lightly some orange on top of it. And then I did purple where the black is going to go. And then I just layered some brown on top. Notice the direction the fur is going. I'm looking very carefully at that picture to make sure I have it in the correct direction. All right, so for the nose, it's not black. In the picture, only some parts are black. So I did first is I layered on some brown, and then I added on some blues and some purples. And here you can see that I'm going in with some black for those extremely dark areas, but only in the parts that I see are in shadow in the picture. So it's very important to look at your picture and draw what you're looking at. All right, so here's an ex a good example of that kind of underlaying color. Um, I, sorry, my camera skipped in that particular part. But here you can see a lot of yellows and purples. These are complementary colors, especially if you have a neutral color like brown. If you put some complementaries underneath it, it's going to really push it out. Um, sorry about the foggy camera. I didn't realize that I had uh, something on my camera lens. But anyway, so um, here you can see that I'm just slowly building up those layers. And notice that I'm looking at my picture on that particular part. So I have that picture zoomed in on that particular area. And I'm really paying attention to the direction the fur is going and also to where those shadows are. So here you can see that I'm building up some darker brown in certain areas and lighter browns in others. And notice that I'm going in with green because I see the leaves are reflecting green on the skin or on the fur in this case. All right, so I'm just layering on more colors and you can see the colors that I'm switching back and forth to and then I'm building back up those shadows. I notice that the sunlight is hitting her cheek in a small area, but then the rest of it is in really dark. So I wanna make sure I emphasize that dark. Notice once again, I'm going in with that black. I'm not using black at first. I'm doing purple and blue first with a little bit of brown on top with black overlapping that. So notice with this eye, it does not look like a typical eye. There is no iris defined and there is no pupil defined. I'm drawing what I see. So that's exactly what I saw, so that's what I did. Very important that you draw what you're looking at, not what you know it should look like. All right, the white part was the most difficult for me because uh, in the picture, it wasn't white. It was all of these other weird, very, very pale colors. So I very lightly colored it with all these different tones that I was looking for. And I slowly build up those values so that it didn't look like a pure white. And notice that I'm uh, for like some colors, like there was no pink in my color pencil box. So I used a red and then I just very lightly colored it with the red to get it that pink look. And it, here what I'm doing is I'm just slowly uh, trying to build up that white value. So I went over with a really pale blue and then I went back over it with a really pale orange. Now the reason I use blues and orange again is because that's complementary colors and it helps make it more of a dull color. And uh, that's better than using just straight up gray because the gray will make it look kind of flat. So here I'm just kind of trying to uh, build up those values, trying to make it pop and stand out more because I noticed in my picture that that part was a lot darker. And um, if you'll notice that there's whiskers on the picture that I have uh, that are exposed, what I did is I just used a sharp edge. Um, I used, the, I think it was like the, the a, a cap of a pen. And then I just pressed really hard into my paper with the uh, pen cap and those lines that where I wanted the whiskers. And you can see that even though I didn't use a white color pencil or anything, those whiskers are visible. That's just a technique that you can use if you know for sure that you want that part white. Um, just be word of caution. As soon as you scratch the paper, you will not be able to get color pencil on there very well. So be very cautious when doing that. All right, so here I am adding some stars in the background. It wasn't in my picture, but I kind of wanted to do that because my dog's name is Laika, and that's uh, the same uh, name as the Russian space dog that went out to outer space, and uh, I just wanted to pay homage to her name. All right, so um, some other things I wanted to mention. Um, uh, the color pencils I'm using are Crayola. So I'm just using the 12-pack uh, Crayola pencils that uh, our students got. So that way, um, this is using the same exact materials that you guys have. 
So uh, the only one that wasn't a Crayola was my yellow and my green because I could not find yellow and green anywhere in my house. So those are like uh, some other brand that I don't even know the name of it. All right, so here you can see that I'm just slowly, oh, sorry, my cat's in the way. But anyway, you can see that I'm slowly just layering in some of those colors. And notice that I'm using circle motions. I try not to scribble too much. I'm just kind of using like really small circly shapes whenever I'm trying to fill in that area. That makes it look a lot less messy and it makes it look a lot smoother. All right, so here I'm just adding on some darker colors on top of the uh, lighter colors and then just slowly building up that value. All right, so I'm getting pretty close to being done with this piece. Something that I might not have mentioned is that I did use my eraser once I got to the color pencil part and erase some of my pencil lines. And um, I did use my uh, finger to kind of smudge in some of the color pencil areas. Um, my advice, don't use your finger until like getting close to the last step because the oils on your finger will mess it up. If not, just use a tissue and that can help out a little bit. All right, so I just cut off my edges and I am done. So here you can see where those uh, whiskers where I scratched the paper really stand out. And that looks pretty neat, I think. And um, uh, you can see all those different colors. So you can see some of those greens and purples and oranges and reds and blues that um, you wouldn't typically think would be there. But the reason that they're there is because I saw them in the picture. So make sure that you zoom in really close and really pay attention to what you're looking at. Something that I didn't mention, but I think it's probably pretty darn important to mention, is that if you want anything white, you have to leave it the white of the paper. So really pay attention to where you're putting your color pencil. Now, as a last resort, you can always get something like white acrylic or white gel pen or something to cover over it. But um, it's best if you just leave and mark out areas that you want white and be very careful not to cover over them. And do the best that you can. And if you need any help, just let me know. All right, good luck.